welcome to Splodge Apologetics. I hope that you've watched the previous video because that's an introduction to this series. So I see that you've watched the last video, so without further ado, let's go into Mark 13. If we picture the scene, Jesus is on his way out of the temple and he's surrounded by crowds. You've got crowds of people just to be there because he's well known. You've got the disciples surrounding him like bouncers. You've got the sick wanting to be healed. Then you've got the Pharisees and the Sadducees also accusing him, asking questions. Everybody wants his attention and you've got scribes writing down everything that he says so that the Pharisees and the Sadducees could use it to accuse him. Today it would be like the, the media would be all around him taking photographs, taking videos of him. If it had happened today, everyone would be on their mobile phones filming everything he said and did. Just to say, oh look, I'm with Jesus today on their Facebook page, or they would use it to accuse him of something. So even today, the media would be out to have him killed. For one minute they would be saying what a hero he is and for all the good he's doing. For the next minute they'll be putting him down by his words and accusing him. And, and that's how it was there in the situation in the temple. The Pharisees, as we saw in the last chapter, were looking for something to accuse him of. They asked him about taxes. They asked him about his authority to do the things that he was doing. So here, still, they'd be still asking him questions, still very angry with him and upset with him. They still, they wanted him dead. And Judas hadn't yet decided to help the Pharisees out. He actually went to the Pharisees to look for an opportunity to betray him because he loved money more than he loved Jesus. No doubt the disciples would be um, asked questions who wanted to get directly to Jesus and the, the, the crowd was surrounded around him, it was like a throng it was. Like the time when he was in the crowd, he was on the way to rise Jairus' daughter from the dead and the woman came up behind him in the crowd. But there was such a crowd around him when the woman touched his, his clothes and they, all, they said to him, you've seen this crowd around you, why, why are you asking who touched you? But Jesus knew that somebody had deliberately taken the hold of him for their healing. And so here it was, people thronging around him, shouting and asking questions, wanting to get him to touch him. Pharisees wanted to get him to arrest him. Quite a scene to see. Like on, you see on the news when there's big protests, big gatherings on, on TV, big crowds swarming round somebody who is famous. Remember in the 60s it was Beatlemania. Everyone were crowding and they couldn't even get into a car without the people mob mobbing them so they could get a glance of George, Paul, John and Ringo. The, the people would be asking the disciples questions as well as asking Jesus questions. So it would be quite a noisy, chaotic time in that temple. Because remember that Jesus had already been teaching the people. He'd probably healed a few people. He'd already overturned the tables of the money changers. So that was another controversy that the Pharisees were angry about. So there's all sorts of going on there. And you have to recognise as well that in Jesus' ministry, he used what we know as apologetics, like my channel is called Splodge Apologetics. And apologetics is defending your stance, then defending your faith, defending what you believe and what you stand for. And Jesus and the disciples used apologetics. The verse for apologetics is found in 1 Peter 3.15. And I'm sure you saw that at the beginning of my video. The scripture there, always be ready to give a defence to everyone who asks you for the hope that is in you. And we should all be ready as Christians to defend our faith because 
For 2,000 years, the Bible, the Christian faith, has been under attack. It's always been under scrutiny. The Bible's always been questioned historically, scientifically, and, and in other ways. But it has always stood firm. The seemingly contradictions aren't there. The Gospels, for instance, they all agree with each other. Though there's different viewpoints there, they don't discount each other. They all stay together, they all stand together as apostles, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. And John is John's Gospel is radically different from Matthew, Mark and Luke's, but they are they are still together, they do not contradict. Jesus also used what's called polemics. Now, polemics is, as we see that apologetics is defence, like I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of rugby league, and in that you have, you have a defence and you have an attack. And polemics is like the attack. So when Jesus in Matthew 23, he's attacking the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the teachers of the law and the scribes and he's calling them out on their hypocrisy and the way that they bring burdens on the people. He calls them out and he attacks them and he says to you, says to them many times, woe to you Pharisees and scribes, hypocrites. And he says that several times and I suggest that you read Matthew chapter 13 because Jesus wasn't just meek and mild and loving and kind and nice. Nice isn't a fruit of the Spirit. He was, he was loving in all that he said. He didn't, he didn't use swear words. He didn't curse them. He would, but he would say, he would call them out and say what they were doing, challenge them in what they were doing. And that's what polemics is. So we should always, there are times when we, we can use polemics, but it is always best first to use the apologetic and to defend your position when anyone asks you for the reason why you believe in Jesus Christ, why he is your Lord and he is your Saviour. Now always be ready and that's why we need to know our Bibles, that's why we need to no scripture, the things that Jesus said and did. No, some of the background as well. Learn those things. There's lots of books about it. And, and just in your Bible, if you get a good study Bible, there's lots of cross-references in there and notes that will help you understand the background of some of the scenes there, just as I've described to you today. That's it for today, but we will go on looking at Mark 13, 1 and 2. We'll see you soon. Take care. God bless and goodbye.